Hello everyone, welcome to Monday. It's April 19th, 2021. Yes, it's April. It's not January or February, it is April. Even though a lot of you are looking out the window right now with gray skies, some of you are seeing some snow right now. Other folks are experiencing some wind as a strong cold front is barreling south into the region. So more waiting. Yep, we got to wait a little bit longer before we can get into some spring like weather. I'm afraid to say it's going to be another five days before we really start to bust out of this. So it's going to be unseasonably cold through the middle of the week. Temperatures possible record temperatures the next two nights, not the nice records. We're talking about possible record low temperatures in some parts, especially in parts of Wyoming. We'll get close to that with we've got some areas that could go single digits to below zero the next two nights in some isolated areas. Now, the middle of the week is a little warmer, but I don't want to get anybody's hopes up. Uh, we'll start to see the weather get a little bit better Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, but there'll be a few showers and temperatures are still going to trail behind averages. However, this weekend and into early next week, we see a reversal of fortune. Instead of the jet stream coming in from Canada, it starts to come in from the West Coast in the desert Southwest. So that's going to warm us up this weekend into early next week. Now, I've shown this graphic several times over the course of the last, well, over the season, really going back to this fall. When you have a La Nina, which we still have, you tend to have wild gyrations. You can have long stretches of mild conditions, and then you can have a reversal of fortune. And we have mentioned several times that this recent spell of cold April weather looks remarkably similar to what happened in February. For a large part of the winter, you can have this west to east flowing jet stream that generally gives you a mild winter pattern and into spring. But a typical La Nina, you can get these big, curvatures in the jet stream that causes big displacements of warm and cold across the northern latitudes to the mid latitudes. This is nothing unusual. We've seen this in La Nina's before where you get these big curves in the jet stream and you can go from mild to cold really quick and you can go from cold really quick to warm really quick. And if you think about how this pattern has been, Going back to that big Arctic outbreak, I'm going all the way back to September. For those of you who can remember, we had that big blast of cold air in September, and then we went much above average and warm and dry in October. And then, and then as we got into that February time frame, we had that big Arctic outbreak, then the big warm up, now another Arctic outbreak. So, the reason for talking about this is that this is typical La Nina, these gyrations. Here we are with the upper level pattern right now. We have a large ridge along the west coast going all the way up into Alaska, and that's displacing the cold air. And really, other than along the west coast, all of the U.S. experiencing colder than normal conditions. And that's how this week is going to start. Here's the cold air boundary coming into the Rockies right here with the cold north winds and the snow along the front. Precipitation wise, the front is going to produce a pretty good swath of light to moderate amounts of rain and snow. This is mostly going to be snow, folks. You can see that the Bighorn Mountains do really, really well in this, as well as Colorado's north central Wyoming mountains of southern Wyoming. So Estes Park, the Rocky Mountain National Park area, the Snowy Range and the Bighorns are the big winners with good spring snows up there in the high country. And you can see that on the plains, amounts are going to be lighter. If you convert that to snow, you can see that a lot of areas will be getting some late April snow out of this pattern. This is the front. This is what the front will produce today, tonight into early Tuesday. Now let's take a look at those temperatures I talked about. These are forecasted low temperatures for the next two mornings. So this is Tuesday morning, and then I'll show you Wednesday morning. For tomorrow morning, anywhere you see the, uh, the purple colors, the darker red colors, you're talking teens and single digits. Wherever you see a gray, that's zero or below. So you can see, well, this is something we talked about last week, North Park around Walden up to Laramie. You know, you're talking possible zero or colder. I don't know if it's going to get zero or colder, but it's going to be close. Some very cold temperatures up here in northwestern areas of Wyoming as well. But even if you're not in the single digits, these are really cold temperatures in the teens elsewhere. So we're talking about some really cold temperatures for this time of year. So this is for tonight and into tomorrow morning. 
This is for Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Actually, Wednesday morning could even be colder. Now, one reason for this is we may have a clear night with light winds and still some snow on the ground. So it is going to be more like the middle of winter than the middle of April, the next two nights and mornings. Now, let's get something that's into something that's a little more fun. Now, this is the jet stream pattern for Thursday. We still have the high pressure ridge up in Alaska. We still have a northwest wind flow pattern into the western United States. The air isn't as cold, and there's more of a westerly flow of air coming into the Rockies from the Pacific Northwest. It's not real warm air yet. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, yes, some moderation in temperatures, but there might be some showers. We got a little wave coming through, and temperatures are still going to be cool. But look what happens by Saturday. By Saturday, the high pressure ridge is starting to retrograde a little bit more to the west. So low pressure wants to come into the areas along the coast, allowing a southwest wind flow to come into the high plains and Rockies. And that's going to give us the happy face with much warmer temperatures and a much more spring-like weather pattern evolving. And this is really going to be noticeable as we get into Saturday and Sunday. Notice the blue here. We still, though, have a lot of cold air to deal with in Canada. And this will come into play later on into the spring season. Uh, but at least we see the end of the week and the weekend bringing us warmer temperatures. These are forecasted high temperatures for Saturday. So you can see lots of 50s, lots of 60s. You can see it really warming up across the desert southwest again and along the eastern side of the divide finally starting to see some warmer spring-like weather temperatures coming west of the divide as well. And as you get into Sunday afternoon, the flow aloft comes up all the way from the desert southwest right into the high plains and Rockies. So this will bring in a big warm up into this part of the area here. So yes, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Warmer temperatures are coming. However, we have a trough here. We still have a lot of cold air here. Are we gonna be done with snow? after this week? Are we going to be done with freezing temperatures after this week? No. We, we still have to get through the middle of May before we can start to breathe easy, but at least we see better weather conditions coming. These are the forecasted high temperatures for Sunday. Look at that. We've got some 80s in eastern Colorado, western Kansas, deep into the 70s across Nebraska, Colorado's front range, and western slope. So yes, we see some warmer weather coming. This is long range chart all the way out to May 1st. And you can see into early May, we have high pressure and southwest winds aloft into the area and some high pressure. So it does look like the end of April into early May is going to be warmer than what we're experiencing now. My rule of thumb, though, is Mother's Day weekend. You got to get through Mother's Day weekend before you can start to breathe easier. If you were to look at the precipitation over the last 30 days, even though we're getting moisture, we need more. This map shows precipitation relative to averages since the March storm. So this does not include the March storm. And you can see all the brown, the reds, the grays here. There are still many areas that are having below average precipitation for the last 30 days. Now we've had this area in eastern Nebraska and parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota that have been more wet. Northern and central Wyoming has gotten more wet. We've got this little pocket near Denver, parts of eastern Idaho, but just pockets, just little islands that have been more wet. April in many areas will probably end up drier than normal. Not a lot drier than normal, but still drier than normal. So we're gonna have to look at May as a month where we need to get more precipitation to catch up with our deficit. Thanks for listening and watching the Day Weather Podcast. Stay warm, we'll see you on Tuesday.